It's January 2021. We're at record numbers of coronavirus cases. There are some vaccines that are getting distributed, but one question's on everybody's mind. What are the potential side effects of the COVID-19 vaccine? Hello, and welcome to What the What, the show about fun facts and a little bit of science. And today we're talking about the potential side effects of COVID-19 vaccines. And should we be concerned about long-term effects? First, we know that the Pfizer vaccine has a 95% efficacy, and that's an outstanding number, especially for something that was created so fast. But some people are refusing to get the vaccine. Why is that? It's generally a lack of knowledge, and I'm not calling people dumb. I'm saying that how is everybody supposed to know everything about anything that's new? And with a lot of misinformation out there on social media, it's easy to understand why people are concerned. I get it. There's no reason to shame these people for having concerns. It's totally understandable. The best thing you could do is listen and answer their questions if they have any for you. And what you can do for yourself is research. That's the most powerful tool you can get, because knowledge is power. In November of 2020, COVID cases were reaching 300,000 plus. And after the holidays and coming into January, we are now over 22 million cases. And that's just in the United States. The longer it's around and the longer it takes us to find a solution, the more infections we'll get and the more deaths will come from that. Regardless of your view on COVID, we should all agree that adding some new problem that's causing people to die is a problem and we need to find a solution to save lives. So are there potential side effects to the COVID-19 vaccine? Of course, as with any medication, there are going to be side effects. Let me give you an example. I'm gonna list some side effects from a treatment and you guess what that treatment is. Ready? Vomiting, dizziness, headaches, blurred vision, a rash, or ringing of the ears. Any guesses what could cause that? Ibuprofen. Yeah, the over-the-counter medication you can get for headaches and fever. And that's been around since the 1960s. So obviously longer than the COVID vaccine and it's, not a vaccine, so it's different. But what we learn here is that even with clinical trials and many years worth of data, we cannot ensure that every single human being will respond the same way. And we find this in extreme cases as well, like when somebody has an allergic reaction to a very common treatment. That person didn't know they were gonna have the allergic reaction and those doctors have performed this potentially for millions of people and had not seen this effect yet. In the end, it's a very small percentage of people that have these reactions and an even smaller percentage that have severe reactions. And people's bodies change over time. I've known people that when they got into their 40s suddenly developed a lot of allergic reactions to very common things like household cleaners. So did everything I just say make you afraid of more treatments or did it ease your mind about new treatments? You should know that the FDA is constantly monitoring all of these COVID-19 vaccines and as of now, they've not seen any cases that cause death. And with a vaccine that has been created in record time, it doesn't mean that it's any less safe. But maybe you are concerned about these vaccines being created so fast because traditionally it takes 10 to 15 years. How are they able to turn this around so fast? Well, there are several reasons. And one of those being that scientists have been working on coronaviruses for a long time. I mean, after all, it's called COVID-19 because it belongs to a family of coronaviruses. And that might be why you see coronavirus on a disinfectant. So scientists have a history of working with coronaviruses. And last year, funding agencies gave billions of dollars to help research against COVID-19. For the FDA to grant emergency use authorization, the clinical trials and research need to show substantial evidence of its efficacy and safety. On the FDA website, they stated this. Clinical trials are evaluating investigational COVID-19 vaccines in tens of thousands of study participants to generate the scientific data and other information needed by FDA to determine safety and effectiveness. So there has to be a little bit of comfort in that, right? I mean, tens of thousands of people. That is really going to help average out the effectiveness and any of the concerns. Maybe you've seen a headline or somebody's told you about how six people died during the Pfizer clinical studies. What does that tell us? Well, the FDA reports 
showed that out of over 43,000 people, six died. That sounds scary, doesn't it? Well, like all data points, you can't just pick and choose one point. You need to look at all of the data, like the fact that four out of six of those participants didn't even get the vaccine. They were given a placebo, meaning they didn't die from the vaccine because they never got it. Only two out of the six were ever given the vaccine, and one died from cardiac arrest, and the other from arteriosclerosis, if I said that right. And arteriosclerosis means the thickening and hardening of the arteries, typically in older age. These participants were over the age of 55, and the vaccine was not listed as having anything to do with their death. So death is not a side effect of the vaccine, but it is a side effect of getting older and having health concerns. All right, you made it. So let's look at those pesky side effects of the COVID-19 vaccines. This list of side effects are from the report by Pfizer. Injection site pain, tiredness, headache, muscle pain, chills, joint pain, fever, injection site swelling, injection site redness, nausea, feeling unwell, and swollen lymph nodes. So not bad at all. I mean, that sounds like a pretty standard list of side effects, especially from an injection. Now, what about allergic reactions? A severe allergic reaction usually happens within a few minutes to an hour of getting a dose of the vaccine. Signs of an allergic reaction include difficulty breathing, swelling of your face and throat, a fast heartbeat, a bad rash all over your body, dizziness, and weakness. So not death. And while it does sound pretty uncomfortable, it's really not that bad. Now, if you are able to get the vaccine and you choose to do so, I'm going to put a couple links in the description below that includes a fact sheet from Moderna and Pfizer with really important information that you should review prior to your appointment. And it's going to tell you what you need to tell your provider, such as if you take blood thinners or you're immunocompromised. It also lists out the ingredients, which is crucial for those of you that know what you're allergic to. Also, all side effects, especially the more severe side effects, were more common in the Moderna vaccine than the Pfizer vaccine. And all of that data is out there, and there will be a link down below that will let you see all of that data, allowing you to make the best decision for yourself. So you might be saying, hey, Jonathan, thanks for all that wonderful information. You're such a stand-up guy and very handsome. But what about long-term effects? What if in 10 years I develop an issue? Well, I hear you. And first, thank you. Sometimes I'm not sure about my handsomeness, so it's nice to hear that. And secondly, long-term side effects aren't really a thing. Even in the most extreme cases of vaccine reactions, they tend to happen within the first six weeks of getting immunized. And luckily, we already have more than six weeks worth of data on these COVID-19 vaccines. And how a vaccine works is actually pretty simple. You're getting a small dose to get a reaction in your immune system. You're actually at a much higher risk of getting long-term side effects from the over-the-counter and doctor-prescribed medicines that you take for a long period of time. And on the flip side, we don't know what all of the long-term effects are of getting COVID-19. What we've seen already has been pretty bad. The short of it, we do know that people will die from COVID-19. And we have incredible results that show that these vaccines will help prevent, well, death. But if it prevents you from getting COVID-19, then you know you won't be suffering from the short-term and long-term effects of the virus. And there were reports of people that have recovered from COVID-19 that have experienced lung damage and loss of taste. Not to mention there may be heart damage and brain damage resulting in heart failure and memory loss. So yeah, like the experts say, the benefits of the vaccine far outweigh the risks. But hey, if you die next week from getting COVID, you don't have to worry about any potential side effects of a vaccine, right? I'll end this video with this. Stay safe and do your part to provide safety to others and respect those around you, which might mean wear a mask, even if you don't believe in them. It's just respect for other people and provides just a little bit of comfort in a world where we are so stressed for so many reasons. As always, thanks for watching, and what did you learn today? <laughs>